next session is uh, by Supriya Ji Chaudhary, uh, Rediscovering Stories of the Family, Encouraging Storytelling Through Effective Use of Technology and Social Media. One more uh, modern application. Uh, Supriya Ji is a communications and content professional uh, from Hyderabad. She's worked in various sectors, including financial and uh, professional services, real estate, and uh, so on. She enjoys watching new movies, more importantly, critiquing them, writes poetry. She's deeply intrigued with the human mind, behavior, and motivation. She enjoys traveling and explore culture and people of all land. Over to you, Supriya Ji. Thank you so much, Shivakumar Ji. Am I audible? Very much. And uh, is my presentation visible? Very much. Okay. Namaste, everyone. I think uh, I was just thinking when was the last time I said Namaste and it's such a beautiful greeting and it has reached uh, far more significance in the pandemic times. Thank you for reminding us of this uh, beautiful greeting through Indica. I would like to thank Indica for giving me this opportunity, especially Dr. Nagaraj Paturigaru, uh, Professor Shivakumarji and Deepa Kiranji. So uh, before we begin, I would like to invoke the blessings of the divine and the ancient wisdom of our forefathers. So that's what uh, this, uh, the paper is all about, discovering stories of the family that is encouraging storytelling through effective use of technology and social media. And uh, when I saw the notification about this conference uh, about storytelling and especially on informal genres of uh, storytelling, it was almost like the story was waiting to be told. It, it was dying to be told. And uh, this will have this paper will have a lot of accounts drawn from my personal experiences. Uh, I'm not going to shy away from you know showing my vulnerable side. I think uh, especially in the current uh, situation of the pandemic, uh, people are waiting to tell their stories, are waiting to be heard, to be listened. And I think the world needs to open up a little bit more and have a free flow of communication. Um, because I think everyone has an untold story. Um, the paper's objective is to urge the current generations to soak in their cultural history. And uh, because it can be a Pandora box of stories ushering in new hope, inspiration, and triumph of the human spirit. What can the elders and the family do about it? How can technology aid in making this a reality? This paper would uh, illustrate real examples of the effective usage of social media, such as Facebook and WhatsApp groups, to further the cause of storytelling within families. So these are, uh, I think, my most important uh, people in my life. Uh, they are no more, but I will talk about them later. My father and my tateya, or my grandfather, as we say. Um, so now talking about, uh, uh, you know, tracing my interest in stories, it, uh, it, it goes back to my early childhood experiences, I can say, because uh, the first question would be looking at my name, Supriya Chaudhary. Uh, so are you Telugu? Do you belong to a particular community in Andhra Pradesh? My answer would be, yes, I am Telugu, but I don't uh, belong to that particular community. So. Uh, so as like what's in a name Shakespeare had said, but I think it had a huge uh, significance in my life uh, because uh, I would again say, uh, you know, I belong to my name is uh, Bengali. Uh, then again, the question would be like, OK, then do you speak Telugu at home? And uh, the tape recorder would begin. Apparently, during the 18th century, some of my paternal ancestors migrated from Bengal to Odisha and over centuries, uh, they intermarried with the locals and then slowly moved to the north coastal parts of uh, Andhra Pradesh, that is Srikakulam and Vishakapatnam. And in the process, we lost touch with our roots and uh, we only speak Telugu at home. So, uh, we, we, I, so this question was always there in my mind, like, uh, who, who am I? What am I? And uh, because we had a lot of uh, uh, 
people in our in within my extended family we had naidus we had patros we had patnaiks uh, we have mahantis uh, so it was all a mad mix of uh, cultural heritage um, so this all started like you know uh, it stirred my imagination it uh, stirred my interest to know who are my people uh, it was a constant quest for my cultural identity and uh, i would also see that influence in the food in the culinary influences like um, i would see something like using a lot of potato uh, using kabuli chana and uh, potals these were all not very much uh, familiar in the regular telugu households but i think this was something that was passed on to uh, our family through our previous generations and uh, so we also had certain um, words uh, that was there as part of our vocabulary and i thought it was common to everyone uh, the fried uh, chana dal i used to call it dal pappu for i don't know what reason uh, but uh, later on i got to know it's not used by anyone <laughs> within the with, within uh, you know everyone else and um, so i to the extent that i googled it to know whether this word really exists and it never existed i really don't know how it came into our family and uh, i also got to know about a pidgin a small language that is used within the community and uh, which is actually extinct now um, it was like a combination of uh, oriya telugu and uh, some unknown words and uh, it it i'll give you a few examples like uh, it was something like you know uh, there was a saying called bayani ko bara batto bayani ke maip ko tera batto and uh, it means that if a madman has 12 ways the madman's wife will have 13 ways so there were so many interesting things uh, uh, about uh, the culture that i was born into about the various cultural uh, elements that came into my childhood and it kind of helped me embrace my cultural diversity and uh, that's when i think uh, this conference gave me a platform to describe more about uh, the element of storytelling especially intergenerational storytelling uh, and how family histories can be a source of great inspiration and can be a great uh, you know way of knowing more about our people so uh so let's dig deeper stories have always fascinated both the young and old since times immemorial listening to stories widen horizons which open to a new world of imagination who were the people that enabled us to open the mind's eye and travel to unknown lands experience beautiful sights aromas and sounds our grandmas grandpas uncles aunts parents and cousins have been part of a growing up experience fed on fables folk tales family histories how many of you have been an eavesdropper to a conversation among adults pretending as if you were asleep i did that conversations that spoke about relatives distant and near their trials and tribulations of settling into a new place or finding a suitable match for their daughter something interesting was to remember these people through their nicknames and meeting them at weddings or family gatherings and quietly grinning at knowing their inside secrets if observed listening plays an important role sometimes there are active listeners like in the case of granny's bedtime stories and in other case eavesdroppers in both the cases the narrators play an important role in capturing the attention of the listeners all these informal conversations and stories about our forefathers or origins will trace out a story of the influence one can have an individual who had this experience of tracing his or her roots is an encyclopedia of stories in himself or herself to begin with as you all know storytelling is an ancient form which in fact the mother of all modern art forms including cinema and also communication everything begins with a story and the intention of sharing stories whether fictional or non fictional was to pass on the knowledge cultural traditions morals morals uh, from one generation to another leaving aside the important aspects of storytelling in the form of entertainment education let me talk about the significance of storytelling from a cultural preservation point of view 
and how technology and social media can be of great help to further this cause. But the natural question would be why we must know about our family history, the stories within our families. The answer to this question would be a question again, why should we not know? Some would say, how does it matter? In the current era of forming connections based on clicks and swipes, which are fragile, transient, and rarely long standing, are we losing sight of our existing connections that are already there thanks to our family roots? This is not to propagate clan culture, but with passage of time, our future generations might not even know from where we have come so far from the lands that are alien to us, which would be merely dots on the map. Most people don't know about their family history. It is because people get interested in their genealogy much later in life. And by the time they realize the importance, the previous generations, that is the parents and grandparents would have passed away. In the process, we are losing generations of stories, anecdotes, real life experiences from which we can draw inspiration and courage to battle the tough times. According to Dr. Robin Fivish, one of the researchers behind the study of the power of family history in adolescent identity and well-being, he says, because our families are among the most important social groups we belong to and identify with, stories about our family tell us who we are in the world and who we should be. Stories about our parents and grandparents provide models of both good and bad times, as well as models of overcoming challenges and sticking together. Dr. Jody Koenig Kellas, a professor of communication studies um, at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, who does research on family identity and storytelling, cautions that how we tell our stories matter. Families who engage in storytelling by being present and warm, who share the floor and build on each other's contributions, who seek out and honor each other's perspectives on how things happened or the meaning of the story, and who work together to create the meaning or moral of the story. These families report higher levels of health and happiness than families who are distant, disengaged, don't take each other's perspectives into account, and don't work together to build story meaning. The answer to this problem is to get people, especially the younger folks interested in their family histories as adolescents and young adults, they can still directly hear from their relatives. But the real question is to inculcate this interest. This can be done by asking thoughtful questions, more participation in casual storytelling at the dinner table or a Sunday afternoon session after lunch. Using common interests and similarities help us to connect not just in our family circles, but also have informal conversations at the workplace. Imagine meeting someone at work and you realize she comes from a place uh, familiar to you. It happened with me, this is not an exaggeration, but a real life account of how knowledge of family history and our roots can connect two friends after four decades. So I met so I met a girl at the office and I came to know she has relatives in Bhimali, a small town uh, close to Vishakapatnam. It's also called Bhimunapatnam. I do remember because of my conversations with my father that we did have connections at that place. And I asked her dad's name and I communicated the same to my dad. Uh, to our surprise and delight, this uh, girl's father and my father were close friends in the 70s. And due to lack of communication and moving across different uh, cities for for work reasons and other things, they lost touch. They re-established uh, contact, I think, in 2017 uh, or so, and uh, were in constant touch until my dad passed away last year. Both my dad and his friend credit me for this beautiful reunion. If I hadn't known my connection to Beamley, probably this reunion could not have been possible. So I consider it as my little victory. Uh, so using common interests and similarities really does help us connect. Research proves that our similarities make us more open to listening and more willing to break down our implicit biases. Uh, Alicia Del Prado, a therapist and one of the researchers behind the study, what a coincidence, the effects of incidental similarity on compliance is, we are more likely to agree to help someone when we see them as similar to ourselves, even if those similarities are small like sharing a first name or a birthday. This approach doesn't mean that our differences don't matter, but rather an acknowledgement of similarities can be a productive place to start. So 
I'll come a little into uh, my personal experience. As an individual of mixed heritage, I will, I'm privy to the tales of my people who have migrated to different lands, seeking fortunes, intermarrying, and bringing about a rich cultural diversity unintentionally. Uh, I've been the only child to my parents who worked in the government sector in Vishakhapatnam. Practically all my growing up years were in this coastal city. My father, uh, so I'll go back to my father and my grandfather. So uh, they were the storytellers, in fact. My father always narrated stories during uh, bedtime and stirred my imagination. And I often wonder how he tried to instill humanity in me by talking about lonely children in the form of David Copperfield and Oliver Twist, young little boys lost in the big bad world, often abandoned by their own families. Uh, in hindsight, I... I realize uh, coming from a broken family himself, my dad was reliving his experiences in the form of these stories. Uh, uh, he also uh, like, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about my paternal grandfather because he came, uh, both my grandparents were separated, uh, but somehow I developed an empathy for my grandfather because uh, of the various accounts I heard about him. He was a foodie and I think I inherit those foodie genes from him. And uh, also it's important, like, you know, I got to understand that seeing people as individuals and uh, giving them the benefit of doubt, uh, I think that was something that was uh, instilled in me uh, quite uh, early in life. And uh, uh, this was my grandfather. And uh, this was a little poem that I wrote for him in his memory. Uh, I don't want to get into the entire poem because it's uh, a little long. Uh, but uh, th this, this was something I think with stories when we hear from our parents, our grandparents, we, this was something I, I didn't even know him. I didn't even see him. Uh, he passed away in the 70s, much before I was born. And uh, still I have a deep connection with this person, uh, you know, stored in the form of a matte finished uh, photograph and uh, so uh, of course he also my dad also narrated stories of adventure when he spoke about Sinbad Aladdin and also some interesting story called Kaupina Samrakshan Ardham Hayam Potatopam which loosely describes the funny struggles of a hermit trying to preserve his loincloth in a dense forest but that's for another day uh, Apart from fictional narratives, I grew up listening to stories about my origin, imagined places of my ancestors, which I never visited till date. Uh, from all my conversations and endless story sessions, my memories peppered with whole lot of anecdotes, experiences shared by my extended family, including my grandfather, aunts, uncles, apart from my father. I don't know if guava still growing the orchard of the Raja of Parlakmedi, courtesy my grandfather who narrated a story of a cat of his cat eating away those guavas from the orchard of the raja as a child i questioned him on how can a cat eat fruit when it eats only fish he quoted the reference of mowgli's cat from the jungle book animated series aired in doordarshan i still have my doubts though if the cat really ate the fruit uh, there is one family recipe which has been passed on from generations a simple but tasty egg preparation which my grandfather ate during his stint in army during the pre-independent era, uh, probably in Peshawar or Lahore. Till date, we prepare this dish in our extended family and it's a great comfort food and a living reminder of my dear grandfather. This is the curry that I'm talking about, uh, the Peshawari egg curry. Uh, so till I, I also know about uh, some... I know about some railway track in the small town of Amdalvalsa where my dad spent his childhood. And I wonder if the hotel that, descri that he described still exists and serves those hot piping puris with uh, the spicy potato curry. So uh, by now you must have understood how intergenerational storytelling has shaped me up and my experiences. And I'm fortunate for having such uh, rich and diverse experiences. Rediscovering our family history is a beautiful journey to understanding ourselves and our family. I remember looking at some old 
family portraits and seeing some resemblance between a great grandfather and my mother. The jaw structure was quite similar. Not just physical attributes, we never know from whom we would have inherited our resilience, sense of humor, or even our stubbornness. In this context, uh, technology and social media can play a major role in rediscovering our family. The social media that is bringing absolute strangers together in the same vein can't we use the same social media to bring our families together. We are annoyed with the family WhatsApp groups with the incessant good morning messages, forwards and videos. However, if we put into good use, social media can be a great source of connecting families. We have a Facebook page that is maintained by an uncle of mine, which occupies documents our uh, extended family's history on my paternal side with many vintage photographs and some interesting descriptions. We have a WhatsApp group also, which is called our Blessed Families with a membership of 87 people, and we are not immediate relatives. Most of us are either third or fourth cousins, and the credit should be given to this uncle who keeps posting some interesting accounts about our uh, forefathers and their experiences. This is very active with people sharing their memories of some cousin who passed away 30 years ago. Not just happy occasions, but we also have great turnout at funerals, thanks to these connections built through social media and technology. So these are, uh, you know, some of the photographs of our uh, you know, a forefathers. This is something to the right. If you see, this is from my father's side, and this is uh, some very old pictures that have been preserved. We have like close to eighty or ninety pictures, um, and uh, so you can see that you know this 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 you know someone in my extended family participating in a fancy dress competition in those days and uh, there was someone who started a school uh, one pet paternal great grandfather then there's someone who played football there's someone who was interested in photography so i think this is such a beautiful way of knowing about our people uh, of understanding about them their interests and uh, and if you see someone becoming a photographer or someone being interested in football or whatever you know i think somewhere it has to do with our genes our uh, history and uh, this is like our family group uh, talk about so many things about uh, so many memories um uh, so this is the man uh, who's responsible mr sudhir kumar pakki my uncle who keeps the family together through whatsapp and uh, facebook um so I think I would like to conclude, I would say, I've been quite fascinated about the ancestors from my childhood. If you see, I should blame it in a, blame it to a blind spot in my gene pool. I'm not sure of the origins of my maternal great grandmother, my Amama's mother. In a cinematic way, she was adopted as a young child and came from some faraway land with rubber plantations on a ship. This part of my family history continues to intrigue and I hope that I will find my answers. On this note, I would like to reiterate the importance of intergenerational storytelling once again. Let us rediscover our family histories and stories. Let us rediscover ourselves. Thank you. Thank you so much, Supriya Ji. Beautiful presentation. And I think you are highlighting a very important aspect of the civilization, which is gradually eroding because of nuclearization and you know distance uh, happening there were always enough number of people who you know who were ready to tell stories and that was accessible to a very large uh, group because of frequent interactions even if there were few people but with distance i think social media is the only way where we can uh, reconstruct it I remember my grandfather used to sit in one corner of the house and narrate stories from his life. And he would often narrate it as though, you know, even if there was no audience, it didn't matter. He would still narrate it. And it, there was, there was a, there was a, 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 some kind of um, unexplainable uh, compulsion within him to tell those stories. Rather, the stories were telling themselves uh, through him. I think this aspect, you know, we will need to figure out how to, uh, somebody in your family has the same compulsion and it's awesome because it keeps, the past then flows uh, to the future in a natural course. So 
disengagement with with the past always creates a bad future uh, very beautiful questions uh, from the audience please thank you so much supriya ji i'm sure uh, your uh, session has inspired many of us to bring back this into our you know uh, ecosystem through modern technology thank you thank you so much